Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video, we'll be practicing balancing reactions. Let's get right into it. In the first equation we see here, the first thing I want you to do is take an inventory of the elements that are listed here. All right, on this side, my inventory includes lithium, hydrogen, and oxygen, and I write them in the same order over here, lithium, hydrogen, and oxygen. Next, I want you to count how many atoms of each do you have. I have one lithium, two hydrogens, and right here, one oxygen. In the product side, I have two lithiums, two hydrogens, and oxygen, I have one. And we clearly see that I don't have the reactants equaling the number of atoms in the product, so we have to balance this in order to make it satisfy the law of conservation of mass. Things we're allowed to do are put coefficients in front of each of these elements or compounds, and I have four locations that I can put a coefficient in. The coefficient is nothing more than a multiplier. Okay, and we're, we're going to use these multipliers in order to balance the chemical reactions. So I'm going to start off with lithium. I have two lithiums over here. I have one lithium over here because the subscript is going to be one. So I'm just going to say two times one will equal two atoms, just like right now it's a one. If there's nothing written here, it's a one. One times two is two atoms. Okay, so lithium has actually now gone from one to two, and I compare the two sides, that looks like they're balanced right now, which is great. Hydrogens, I have two over here, and I have two over here. So far they're balanced as well, and the oxygens, one and one. So as I see here, the two one one combo is the same as the two one one combo over here. I have balanced my chemical reaction. I'm gonna put ones in here as the coefficients or the multipliers in order to satisfy this. So I have two lithium atoms that will react with one molecule of water to produce or create one compound of lithium oxide and one molecule of H2. It's nothing more than a chemical recipe. Any point during this video, guys, please press pause. Try balancing these equations on your own. I'll come around on the other side and help you. Yes, there's blanks here. There are some blanks. These blanks are the same place as you saw last time. Sometimes I include blanks and sometimes I don't. Let's take a little inventory of what's going on here. We have an iron, we have sulfur, and we have oxygen. I have one iron atom. I have two sulfur atoms. That comes from this right here. And I have two oxygen atoms. All right. On the product side, I have iron, sulfur, and oxygen as well. I have two irons. I have three oxygens and one sulfur. I just got those from the subscripts. Let's go ahead and balance. I'm going to balance the, um, oh, I don't know. Anything we, we, we can do, if there's any order, you can start here, 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 or here. So it really doesn't matter in which uh, place you start. So let's just start right here. Okay, we'll do something different. I say I have two irons and one iron. So the irons are definitely out of balance. I have three oxygens and two oxygens. So if I'm going to balance these the oxygens at least, let's work with them first. Uh, oxygen, two, and th two does not go into three in a whole number ratio, but they do go into the number six. And if I do 3 times 2, I have a, a 6 there, and a 2 times 3 gives me 6 oxygens. I'm going to change my oxygen right now to 6, and I'm going to change this oxygen to 6 as well. 2 times 2 gives me, though, 4 FEs. So the number of irons I have has now been altered. I need to put over here 4 times 1 to give me 4 FEs. But I want you to see, by putting 4 in front of here, that's also distributed to the 2. 4 times 2 gives me 8 sulfurs. And I need to make my change right here. It's actually an 8 now, 8 sulfurs. And I need 8 times 1 is 8 sulfurs. Boom. Okay, so 4, 8, and 6. 4, 8, and 6. Law of conservation of mass was satisfied. In this problem, let's check it out. I'm going to start off with my atom inventory, C, S, and O. And I'm going to count the atoms on each side. Excuse me. Ooh, made a mistake there because carbon appears right here and also right here. So technically there are two carbons. Okay? Sulfur, I have two, and oxygen one. So I definitely don't have uh, a balance here. These are not balanced at all. I need to use coefficients to balance them. One advice I'm going to give you here is that I want you to see that carbon appears here, here, and here. It appears in three different locations. Anytime you see an atom that is in several different locations, you tend to balance them last. All right, so I'm going to balance the easier ones first, the easier ones that are not used as frequently. I'm going to choose either sulfur or oxygen to balance first. Let's just begin with sulfur. I'll put a 2 in front of this to make it 2, because right now it's a 1 times 2 equals a 2 times 1. So I have two sulfurs now, and a 2 times 2 gives me four oxygens. Let's look at the number of oxygens now. 
2 times 2 is 4 oxygens. I need over here 4 oxygens as well. 4 times 1. So 4 times 1 is 4 oxygens. And 4 times 1 is 4 carbons. Plus this carbon right here, which makes it 5 carbons. On the other side, I need to make sure I have 5 carbons as well. And right now I only have 1. And if I put a 5 in front of here, 5 times 1 gives me five atoms of carbon. So really what I have here is that five atoms of carbon are going to react with two molecules of sulfur dioxide to produce one molecule of carbon disulfide and four molecules of carbon monoxide. Once again, um, key in on which element, if any, not all the time it happens, but if any times you have an element that appears very frequently, balance it last. The one that's used most frequently should be balanced last. In this problem, I'm going to make another atom inventory. Why don't you press pause, guys? Please press pause and just try this problem on your own. Even try the atom inventory on your own, too. I have one nitrogen, three hydrogens, two oxygens. I have two nitrogens, two hydrogens, one oxygen. All right, and so as we work this out here, I see, are they balanced? Are they equal? No, and I have to use coefficients in order to satisfy the law of conservation of mass. Let's just begin anywhere we want. Why don't we, in this case, um, begin with... Nitrogen. Here's nitrogen. There's two nitrogens here and one nitrogen over here. Well, I'm just going to do a, a 2 times 1 to give me two nitrogens. And that changes that number to 2. And 2 times 3 is 6 H's. So no longer I have 3 H's, I have 6 H's. So now let's work with the H's. I have 6 H's. Let's go over here. Let's make it a 3 times 2 gives me 6 H's. H's are now balanced, and 3 times 1 is 3 oxygens. Awesome. And the nitrogens are balanced, but the oxygens still are not balanced. 3 and 2. All right, and we need to now obviously find a number that 3 and 2 both go into, and that's going to be 6. And this is going to alter some of my problems here. So my coefficients, 3 times 2 gives me 6. And I'm going to erase this now, guys. This is gone, and I need to put a, a 6 right here. Okay, so I'm going to take a pause here. Do my atom inventory, 3 times 2 is 6. I have 6 oxygens. 6 times 2 is 12 H's. I'm going to put that over here now, 12 H's, and 6 times 1 is 6 O's. It's getting a little crazy. All right, so the O's are balanced. The H's are not balanced. I have 12 over here, and I have 6 over here. So let's fix the H's. Let's make them 12. Okay, I need to make it a 4 right here. 4 times 3 is 12 H's. And 4 times 1 is 4 N's. And the last thing I need to do now is fix up my other ends because the oxygen's are balanced, hydrogens are balanced, and we can fix up the nitrogens right now because they're not balanced. I have four over here. I need to put a two right here. And two times two gives me a four nitrogens. And my equation is balanced. That was a really messy uh, equation. Sometimes you like that. If they are, just work them out. Your atom inventory is really a key to doing this problem well and making sure you're not making mistakes. All right, so once again, the coefficients or the multipliers are four, three, two, and six. That was a tough one, guys. In this equation, once again, you're going to see um, something happening, and that is that the uh, there is an element that appears frequently, and that happens to be sodium. It appears in three out of the four possible locations. Like, I consider this location, this location, this, and this. It appears in three out of the four locations. That means it's a pretty popular element, and we're not going to balance it first. We're going to balance it last. So I have Na as an atom inventory. I have nitrogen as an atom inventory, and I have oxygen. Right now, there's two, nit so two sodiums because I have Na1 and also Na1, and I add them together to make two. Nitrogen has one, oxygen three. And what we're going to find out, guys, is that we don't have a balanced equation here. And we're going to need to use coefficients once again to balance it. But once again, please balance the element that is appears most frequently very last. Let's get into it. This time, let's start then with sodium. I see two sodiums here. And I... <laughs> excuse me. We're not going to start with sodium because it's used the most. In this problem, we're going to begin with either nitrogen or oxygen first because they're used least frequently. Let's begin with nitrogen. I have two nitrogens there and one nitrogen over here. Put a two right there. That makes this two plus one Na. That makes this three Na's. Okay, two times one N gives me two nitrogens. 
and 2 times 3 gives me 6 oxygens. Okay, so we've dealt with nitrogen now. Now let's deal with oxygen. I have 2 times 3, which gives me 6 oxygens, as we see over here. And right now I have 1 oxygen right there. So I need to make that a 6. 6 times 1 gives me 6 oxygens. Now, I have improved oxygen. It is balanced. Nitrogen is balanced. But now let's see what happens to sodium. 6 times 2 gives me 12 sodiums. I need 12 sodiums on this side. I only have 3. And so what I want you to see, though, if I put a number in front of here, I'm going to affect everything in here. Nitrogens and oxygens will change also. But I don't have to do that because I need 12. And the question is, what plus 12, what plus 2 will give me 12? And it's really going to be 10. 10 times 1 plus 2 times that is going to give me 10 plus 2, 12 total sodiums on this side. So the law of conservation of mass has been satisfied. The problem isn't necessarily the easiest problem, but it does work. Keep a good inventory, and you should be fine. Okay, guys, and once again, in this problem, you're going to see um, we have a common, a very common element here that happens to be oxygen. I'll balance that last. This time, I'm not going to do an atom inventory. I'm just going to work it without it, okay? Let's give it a shot. It'll be a little faster. I have three carbons. I need three carbons over here, three times one. Carbon's done. I have eight hydrogens. I have two hydrogens. I need a four times two to give me eight hydrogens. Now let's deal with oxygen. Three times two gives me six oxygens right here. Plus four times one gives me four oxygens. So altogether, I have ten oxygens. Let's put that right here. Five times two. So the coefficients are one, five, three, and four. Once again, pretty easy when you leave the most popular or most common element to the very end. In our last example here for the day, we're going to check this one out in the same style as last time. And once again, I'm not going to do an atom inventory down here. I'm just going to work the problem out. Maybe you're feeling a little more comfortable now. Oxygen is the most popular element here, the one used most frequently. I'll balance that last. Let's go to the carbons. Either hydrogen or carbon works fine. Let's go to carbons first. I have 10 carbons here because right now this is a 1. 1 times 10. And I'm going to put a 10 here. 10 times 1. They're balanced now. Hydrogens, 22. Ooh, ah. Uh, 11 times 2 is 22. Okay, now let's go to oxygens. 10 times 2 is 20 oxygens plus 11 times 1. All right, that's going to give me 31. In order to multiply this by 2, I can kind of say, what is 31 divided by 2? And the answer is 15.5. Now, you're not done. You're not allowed to use a 15.5. You're not allowed to use a 0.5. But what you can do is to make that a whole number, multiply every coefficient by 2. When you do that, the coefficients become 2. 31, 20, and 22. And I know I've done a good job because I can't reduce those any lower. If I had an atom inventory, it would prove the fact that I have equal numbers of atoms of each element on both sides. Anyway, guys, that was a pretty good one. Hope it helped you. Have a good night.